Deliverance Revival Tabernacle Church presents The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. and friends reaching souls unlimited with the gospel of Jesus Christ raising up Jesus believers throughout New England the nation, Canada and the world and now our pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. Well, praise the name of Jesus, for he's worthy to be praised. I'm Pastor Osborne. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of The Time Is Now radio and television program. It's my prayer and sense of hope that God will use this program and use us right now as an instrument to minister to your needs. And I'm certain that God's going to do just that. So we have a word that we're going to share with you today. I got so much word and so little time, as I say all the time, but I'm going to do the best I can to, to share with you as much as I can. So God is good all the time. Before we get into the word, because I don't want to take time to just tell you, but tell you a little bit more about us. We are, I am Pastor Osborne, the pastor of Deliverance Revival Tabernacle. Our church is located uh, in Duxbury uh, at 298 High Street. Currently, we have services on Sunday at 10 a.m. in person. Uh, we do a 12 p.m. on Sunday, 12 after in the afternoon, uh, live message on YouTube. My wife and I uh, do that on Sunday afternoon at 12 o'clock on YouTube. And then we have a Thursday evening Bible study we do on YouTube uh, at 7 p.m. So if you know about YouTube, go to YouTube in the search bar, type in E.I. Osborne like you see at the bottom of your screen, uh, and you'll find our channel. If you're there on Sunday, uh, at around 12 o'clock, you'll, you'll, you can join our live message, or Thursday evening at 7, you can join our, mess, uh, our live uh, Bible study as well. And while you're there, if you go right now, when I'm done, after this message, and you go to YouTube, and you go to our channel, there's hundreds of videos there, hundreds of messages there, uh, and you should find something, a subject matter, a topic that will minister to whatever it is you're going through and dealing with right now. And when you do, not if you do, when you do, like it. After you watch it, hit that like, that thumbs up. It's not a like. It doesn't say like. It's just a thumbs up. Hit that button. And then also do us a favor and subscribe. Okay? You see that little subscribe, a little red icon that says subscribe. Hit that, hit that like uh, subscribe button so that we can uh, increase our number of subscribers. We're trying to do that. It just uh, gives us access to so many other things that YouTube offers. All right? And also, if you see a message and you enjoy it and you, it helps you and blesses you, Share it. So there's a little arrow or the word share. Click on that. You can email it. You can post it on Facebook and all of your other social media things and so on. And so that other people can be blessed and with the word, not me. It's not about me and tell, showing up so people know who I am. I am nobody. I'm just somebody sitting here that God is using to, to minister to people as he could be doing with anyone. So I'm no one. But if the word, if that message blesses you and helps you and so on, then let somebody else hear it as well. Now, God is healing someone right now in the area of your left hand, maybe especially, let's see, especially, I believe, in this, this uh, finger right here. What is that? Whatever, this pointing finger, whatever they call it. Maybe, and then maybe, but parts of your hand. And so whatever you're experiencing in your left hand, someone, it might be some numbness, someone else, it may be some tingling, but whatever it is, whatever's happening with your circulation or your nervous system, whatever that is, that God is healing that even now. So be healed, receive that in Jesus' name, all right? So let's get into this. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity to minister to those that you've allowed to be listening and watching right now. You're an awesome God. You're good all the time. And I thank you that you have anointed this word and anointed me to minister to your people. And my prayer and my desire is that you would confirm the word with miracles, signs, and wonders, with a manifestation of the gifts and the fruit of the Spirit for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay? So now, you know, it's interesting because Ecclesiastes chapter 3 starts out with, to everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. A season. What's a season? You know, a season is a set period of time. A season has a beginning and it has an end. A season doesn't go on. There's, uh, it's, a season is not permanent. Permanent. It's momentary. It's temporary. You know, just like in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17, it talks about for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. So let's look at that real quick. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse uh, 17. For our light affliction, God calls that trouble, that problem that you're facing, light. He says, which is but for a moment. But for a moment means it's temporary. There is absolutely nothing in this life, including life itself, 
okay? That is not temporary. Everything in this world, everything in this life, including life, is temporary, okay? But for a moment. And then it says, working for us <clears throat> a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So whatever the issue, problem, trial, persecution, affliction you're going through is not working against you. God says working for you. It says a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, which is to say that the, the victory and the blessing and whatever's going to come out of it when you get through it and, and on the other side is going to be greater than the problem was and it's going to be eternal. I compare it to Jesus. You know, he came, he was scourged, he was crucified, he died in the grave, three days and three nights, was resurrected, right? And the Bible says in Hebrews, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and the shame and so on. So what happened is this. You think about all the suffering, as terrible, as horrible as it was, the suffering, the scourging, the crucifixion, what happened, what Jesus accomplished was greater, you know, uh, than, than, whatever, than what he went through, and what he accomplished is eternal. That salvation that he purchased for us is available to us. It's eternal. <clears throat> it's always, here's the thing, salvation is always available. Salvation, salvation is always available. It's always available 24 hours a day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right, 365 days a year, and so on. It's always available, but, but, but you can't get saved whenever you want. What did he, what did he just say? Let me say it again. Salvation <clears throat> is always available, but you cannot get saved whenever you want. And someone might think, what? Now, you read, either you're ready to turn me off or you want to hear a little more or you're thinking this. I thought he was a preacher and a good guy, but now I realize he's of the devil. Well, no, I'm not of the devil, okay? At least I don't think so. But let me, let me, so let me just explain to you where I'm coming from with that. See, you know, when, you know, what's interesting is this. You know, when you read the Bible, what you got to do, what you have to do is read the Bible. So if God says to everything, if it wasn't everything, you know what he wouldn't have said? Everything. To everything, there's a season, a set period of time. Do you know there's a period of time when you can get saved and a period of time? You know, even, 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 uh, well, yeah, there's a period of time when you, and there's a period of time when, when you, when you can't get saved, okay? I'll, I'll show you in just a second. But when he said to everything, there's a season. Season, as I said, has a beginning and an end, all right? And as much as like if, if, you if, if, if you're in New England listening and watching right now, like uh, where I am, okay, there are times when winter comes and goes, you know, so they announce in whatever, March or whatever it is, or April, okay, that spring is here. Today is the first day of spring, and we might have 12 inches of snow on the ground. Today is the first day of spring, and then, then that day and the next day and the next few days, it might snow. You know, it might snow cats and dogs, as they say. I don't know why they say cats. But, but even though the, they've announced that it's spring and the, and, the, and the calendar says it's spring, it might still appear to be winter. But the bottom line is this. At some point in time, you know, that we know winter is over. And at some point in time, the, the, the things that represent winter have to go. The snow has to melt. The temperature has to warm up and so on. Now, if you get to August, even July and August, and it's still 20 degrees and it's still snowing, now you got a little problem, all right? But even then, the, you, you're still, you're still in, a, in the new season because everything is separate. But here's the, it's temporary. So here's, here's what I want to tell you, all right? And, and I'm telling you this because Jesus is soon to come. I wish I could tell you uh, other things, but I don't have time. Jesus is soon to come. And God is trying to give you as many reasons to be saved as possible, all right? If you haven't heard a reason that, that's, that's encouraged you to get saved up to this point, maybe this is what's going to do it. And I'm going to tell you what I know also right now. The reason, even the reason you're listening to me, the reason, what, the reason you're listening to me is, is going to confirm this word right now. Because, see, someone, some of you listening to me right now, here's how you are. You would never, you would never listen to a preacher on the radio like you're listening to me right now on WEZE 590 on the AM dial, 430 in the afternoon on Sunday. You would never listen to me. Some of you watching me right now on, on cable access on television or on YouTube, you would never watch a preacher on YouTube. You could care less what a preacher has to say. You would rather watch paint dry than watch a preacher. But not only are you watching me, you're watching this other preacher and that other preacher, and for some reason you just can't get away from You need to hear preachers. You need to know what they're saying. You need to know what the Bible says. But typically, normally, this is the last thing that you would want to do. But you just cannot get away from it. The reason is, is because God is drawing you. 
You are in the season right now. Not that the season won't come again, but it's still, it's a season nonetheless. To everything there is a season and a time, a season. This is your season. This is your time when you need to be saved. Don't ignore it. Don't, don't just blow it off. You need to be saved. Now, as, I, as I've said before, I grew, when I grew up in church, my dad's the pastor, of course, so we were as teenagers, many of us said, we're going to get saved. But there was young man, young man, one young man, he says, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be a hypocrite. So he decided not to get saved. And you know what? It's not that he died the next day, but he died at a, at a kind of, at kind of a young age. And I believe if he would have gotten saved then, God would have helped him and so on. And when he got to that young age where he did pass, maybe he would have lived a little longer. Another friend, he, he, he said, um, he, he, another guy, we were at church and a preacher was there. She, she, she was preaching on a Sunday evening service. And she did an altar call, and she moved around those people that came up to be saved, and she pointed out a young man. She said, young man, I wouldn't leave this church tonight without being saved, without accepting Jesus as Savior. And she encouraged them, encouraged them, encouraged them. And he said, his answer, his reply was, I'm too young to be saved. Well, a week or so later, he was, he was killed, shot, mistaken identity. Some man upset about something thought he was someone mistaken identity. I believe if he would have accepted, it's not about where he spent eternity. I, I think he might have had an opportunity. I think he had the opportunity to be saved. I think he, he knew in his, in his last breath and last thoughts or whatever to receive Jesus as Lord. So I, I'm not saying that he's in hell. He didn't make it to heaven. I believe he did make it to heaven. But I believe his receiving salvation that night would have changed uh, uh, the time and in in that experience in that situation. God would have had the angels. God would have dealt with him being in another place at another time or whatever the case may be. Maybe God knew if he didn't get saved that night, he would never want to be saved ever again. You see, because you can't just get saved whenever you want. You have to come when God is drawing you. My mom used to tell us that, and it wasn't until I was older and I realized that that is, she was saying that, and it's scripturally correct. It's, it's biblically sound that you cannot just get saved whenever you want. As I said, Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, to everything there's a season, time to every purpose under heaven. So there's a season where God is drawing you. There's a time when you need to be saved. But let me just show you this real quick and prove it to you even more. So I, I don't have time to read all this, but I'll start in verse 41 of John chapter 6. The Jews then murmured at him because Jesus had said he's the bread come down from heaven. So it says the Jews then murmured with him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said he came down from heaven? So is he trying to say he's the Messiah, he's the Christ? What, what is he trying to say? And so they're arguing and murmuring and going back and forth and trying to figure out what, he's, what, he, what he means by he's the bread come down from heaven, right? What is Jesus' response? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, murmur not among yourselves. Don't try to figure it out. Don't bother trying to discuss it and figure it out like that. He says, because no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him and I'll raise him up at the last day. So Jesus is saying, there's no use in you trying to figure this thing out, arguing amongst yourselves, trying to figure it out, trying to understand it, because it come, these, these things, the, you know, who Jesus is comes by revelation. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16 to, to Simon, when he says, who do men say that I am? And who do you say that I am? And he says, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. It came by revelation. It comes to men. It came to me one day. That's why I'm saved, by revelation. It comes to us by revelation. And, and God is drawing us. So here's what Jesus said. He said, "Unless God, it's almost like if God doesn't show you and draw you and reveal it to you. But here's the thing. And God is revealing it and drawing every man, but he's not always. So even in Genesis, let me look at Genesis uh, chapter 6 real quick. Genesis chapter 6, because see, God is not always striving with you and, and, and so on. And, he's, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. So there is a time when God is dealing. That's why he's dealing with you, and, and there's times when he's not. That's why right now, like I said, some of you, the last thing you would ever see yourself doing is listening, finding a preacher on the radio and actually listening. The last thing you would see yourself doing, you know, you'd rather listen to static. You'd rather ride down the road in your car and listen to your radio or whatever, just making noise of static than listening to a preacher. But why are you feeling like you have to hear me and other preachers? Why do you have your radio tuned in right now? Because God is drawing you. There's some of somebody watching, listening, right, watching by television right now, and you just know you have to watch me and other preachers or whatever because God is drawing you right now. You'd rather watch paint dry. 
then listen, then watch a preacher and listen to what we have to say. Because you have this attitude where preacher, preachers and God and the Bible and the word like that. But what's different right now? What is different right now? I'm here to tell you the, the difference right now is God is drawing you. And while God is drawing you, this is your season, this is your time when you need to, need to be saved because God's spirit does not always strive with man. Jesus said, as I said, I'm going to go back to John chapter 6, chapter six and uh, verse 44, I believe it is. Jesus said there, no man can come to me. No man can come to me. These are Jesus words. Now, you can study that in all types of translations. Go back to your church, ask your pastor, and, you know, ask him to study it. Don't tell him just give you a, a thought off the top of his head because I've looked at all different translations and all different things, and they all say the same thing. Jesus says, no man can come to me, here's the thing, except the Father which has sent me draw him. So it's not just you deciding, oh, I just want to get saved today. And sometimes it's not, and sometimes in the ways, you, you, whether you realize it or not, you might say, well, no, I got saved because my life was so terrible. God allowed your life to get that terrible. That was his way of drawing you. Oh, I got saved because I got sick. And God, uh, you know, God just let these things happen uh, because that was his way. There's many ways that God uses to draw us, but ultimately uh, when it's all said and done, it's God drawing you. So Jesus says in the, in, the, in the King James, no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. All right. Then you go to, let's say, the message translation. OK. And Jesus says, uh, let me see here. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, I know I, I saw it here before. Well, I'll read to you the NIV. Uh, the NIV says he says uh, no one can come to me unless the father who has sent me draws them. The good news translation, all right? No one come to me except the Father who has sent me draws them to me. Same thing. Uh, uh, the, the, the Passion translation, okay? Um, the only way, listen to the Passion translation. The only way people come to me is by the Father who sent me. Listen to what it says. He pulls on their hearts to embrace me. Now, as I said, all right, salvation is always available, all right? And then it says, and those who are drawn to me, I will, insert, I will certainly raise up in the last day. So salvation is always available, but here's what God does. He gives you the desire. That drawing is the desire. Because you don't have a desire to listen to a, a, pre a, a preacher on radio. You don't have a desire on your own to watch a preacher on TV. You never have that desire. You'd rather watch paint dry. But because God is drawing you, God is giving you that desire right now. You are feeling like you need to be saved. You may not want to be saved, but you're feeling right now that you need to be saved. 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 That is God drawing you. It's not God doesn't make you want to be saved. He just makes you know you need to be saved because he can't make you want to be. If he made you, if he made you want to be saved, then he's messing with your free will and he's never going to do that. It's not him messing with your free will and making you want to desire something you don't want. No, he, he can't, he's not going to mess with you. He's not going to take your free will, but he makes you know you need to be saved. Right now, for whatever the reason, you know you need to be saved. You need to be saved. I believe that young man, when the preacher said to him, young man, I wouldn't leave this church without getting saved tonight. I believe that was a confirmation to him. I believe in his heart and his spirit. He knew when he left that church, I need to be saved. But for whatever the reason, because he has free will, he resisted it, he rejected it, didn't allow it, and later on possibly paid the price as a result of that, all right? And then an amplified version, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and this is what it says, giving him the desire to come to me, giving him the desire to come to me, giving him the desire to come to me. Isn't that something? You don't have that desire on your own. Your flesh will never desire to come to Jesus. Your spirit will. God deals with your spirit. And he says here, the, the New Living Translation, New Living, for no one can come to me except the Father who hath sent me draws them to me. All right? Salvation is always available, but your desire, see, that's what it comes down to, your desire. How come sometimes you desire to go to church? I don't know. And then other times you don't, and you just resist it and stay home. Well, 
if, if you're watching me right now, it's not a coincidence, it's not accident. I don't believe in coincidence, nothing just happened. If you're listening to me on radio right now, it's not just because you decided to scan and it came across, you said, this, what is this? His voice sounds a certain way. Or, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, I, I like that opening. What was that? No, it's not that, it is God. Everything that's, just, that's happening right now in you, whether it's me or the next preacher or the last preacher that you listen to or the next person that you'll hear. All right, that guy, you might ride, be riding down the road and all of a sudden while, while I'm talking or after I'm done or whoever, you look up and there's a man holding a sign saying, Jesus is coming, get right, repent. You think that was a coincidence? No, that's not, okay? That is God drawing you, okay? God knows what God knows every minute, every second, and God knows you need to be saved today. Not because like, like this guy that was at church, oh, somebody's going to shoot you and kill you, mistaken identity. I'm not prophesying that. I'm not telling you that. I'm just telling you that's what happened to this young man. Not because like my friend who, who uh, he hadn't come to church in years, had kind of, you know, backslidden, got, gotten away from God and so on, and a friend, another friend saw him and just couldn't get away from encouraging them to come, trying to get him to come back, trying to get him to come back to the Lord and come back to church. And he said, I don't have time. He kept saying, I don't have time. I don't have time. His thing was, I don't have time. Well, within a week later, he died tragically. Okay, he died tragically within a week. And my friend who saw him and who was encouraging him to come to church, he, he was in tears saying, he said, that's, he said the, the, the thing that was so profound to him is that he kept saying, I don't have time to go to church. And literally he didn't because within a few days he was dead. He needed to get saved right then. Because I believe he got saved before the next Sunday when he might have gone to church. You know, uh, 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 he, he, um, you know, he died before the next Sunday when he, when he should have gone. So the time to come. When is, when is the time of salvation? As it says in Hebrews, okay? As it says in Hebrews, now is the time, right? You don't want to wait. You, don't, you shouldn't wait. You need to get saved today. And you're not listening to this by accident. It's not a coincidence or chance or whatever. God is drawing you. You're listening. You're watching because God. So it says in Hebrews 3 and verse 7, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, what is the Holy Ghost? Who is the one? He is the one drawing people. He is the one bringing you to that place of, of, of desiring salvation. Today, when is the day? Today, if you will hear his voice. Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation and wellness, all right, when the Father's tempted and proved me. But he says today. So right now, right now, before, you know, if you need to pull to the side of the road, maybe you're already, if you, if you need to pull in a parking lot, okay, if you need to just shut everything off, if you need to go to another room, whatever, I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Because make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. This is not a coincidence. It's not chance. You need this happen. It's, it's not, a, and listen, it's not a coincidence that you're feeling the way you feel and I'm saying what I'm saying. What I'm saying to someone right now is so much registering in your spirit. Your mouth is open. Your eyes are bugged out. It's like you can't believe it because I am describing exactly what you're going through. You just have this feeling, this need, this, this feeling in your, that you've had for maybe a day or so or whatever it is that you need to be saved. You need to be saved. And you don't really even want to be saved right now, but you can't get away from the feeling that you need to be saved. Is that, it can't get any, God can't give you, can't deal with you any more clearly and plainly than he is right now. So listen, I hope you're ready because we're going to pray. Say this with me right now. Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. I believe Jesus is your only begotten son. I believe he came. I believe he died. I believe you raised him on the third day. I believe he's coming back again. So come into my heart, fill me with your spirit, baptize me in your Holy Ghost with a manifestation of all the gifts and the fruit of the spirit. I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you just said that prayer, man, I got the best news you could ever hear. You're saved, you're born again, you're on your way to heaven, and I'd love to see you in time. Deliverance Revival Tabernacle, 298 High Street in Duxbury, 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, but if I don't see you in time, I see you in eternity. And listen, you don't have to come to my church. If you have a home church you grew up in, it don't feel, well, I got to go to his church now. You can go find a church. If you grew up in a home church, there's so many good churches around. I'm not trying to get anyone to leave their church and come to my church. I'm just trying to get people into heaven, not into my church. I'd love for you to come, but my, my job is to get you, first of all, into heaven. So find a church, go to church, be taught, fellowship with other believers, and I pray that God will bless you. Now, I pray for people to be healed right now because God says you're healed. You are the healed, and the devil is trying to put sickness on you. But I rebuke that sickness. I bind it. I cast it off of you now. 
in the name of Jesus. So I got to go. I want to remind you, Jesus Christ came that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. So stop dying and live, live, live. Thank you for tuning in to The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. and friends. We pray that this message has been a blessing to you. If you would like some information on anything you heard in today's episode or to find out how you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ, please call us at 508-746-4085. If you would like a copy of this message, further information about our ministry, or to make a donation, please visit our website at www.eiosborne.org or correspond by mail at The Time Is Now, P.O. Box 3642, Plymouth, Massachusetts, 02361. On behalf of the ministry, thank you.